I love watching my Joe cantering across the flats. Sun setting behind him, children running to greet him. Waving his hat with joy on seeing him. He's been away three months. Mrs. Joe Johnson, I'm worried about her. She's alone. Molly Johnson grew up out here. She knows the way. I'm just a drover's wife. Cross me and I'll kill you. I'll shoot you where you stand and I'll bury you where you fall. <laughs> My children need me. They need their mother. I love yous. Love you! Mama! Always with you. Welcome to Everton. Little more than you bargained for. Walking straight into a murder investigation. Six people dead. Probably a Narago man, sir. the show. Uh, the temptation for me is to say welcome to Wentworth Unlocked, but of course this time we're doing something slightly different. We're going off on a bit of a tangent. Hey, it's our show, we can do what we want. Um, all because one of the Wentworth uh, actors, one of the Wentworth alumni that we love, uh, has got a very exciting project which is about to be released here in the UK uh, on the 13th of May, um, a brand new film. So let's welcome to the screen Leah Purcell. Hi. Hello. Hello there. Hello. Good evening and good day to you, I think, over there. 12 o'clock midday? Yeah, midday first here. What time is it with you guys? It's uh, 6 past 9 p.m. Okay. in the evening. And you're, uh, so you're in Melbourne at the moment in the yes. middle of a very busy publicity tour? Certainly am. For the film. How's that going? Oh, it's great, you know, and we've had aw awesome audience um, uh, viewings and, and they've stayed around for the Q&As um, and that's, yeah, it's been amazing. People are really touched, really emotional, um, loving the conversation. So fingers crossed they go out and tell a friend and a friend tells a friend and they buy some tickets and get into the cinema and, and see, the, see the movie. Brilliant. So the film opens in the UK on the 13th, but um, it's already, yeah, it's already yeah. opened here in Australia. No, we open on the 5th, so oh, Thursday okay. 5th, and then I think the UK is the third, Friday the 13th. Oh, is that right? okay. Yeah. Great. So unlucky for some, but I love that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's very cool, very brave. Um, if you're superstitious, are you superstitious at all? I'm spiritual, but I don't, uh, you know, no, I'm not really superstitious, but I'm spiritual, very spiritual, believe in the okay. spirit world. Okay. Um, obviously, we're going to talk about Wentworth uh, a little bit during this, but um, I'm going to just start with such a simple question, because the title, The Drover's Wife, um, Drover isn't a term that we use in the UK particularly, and I think um, there'll be audience out there from other countries that may not know exactly what the term means. What is a drover? I guess um, a shepherd, someone who herds animals, um, a cowboy in America. Um, so drovers um, would transport 
back in the old days, and, and sometimes they still do it today, um, they would be on a horse and they would steer the cattle or sheep across country to greener pastures. Right. And when they fatten them up, they take them to market. A lot of and a lot of um, the way that's done these days is on trucks, you know, and people would. But I've worked, you know, I've got family families that run farms, and they still you know, bring out the horse or it's always on a four-wheeler trike now. It's all very modern. But yeah. the drover is still very much out there. And in a country of the scale of Australia, taking the, the sheep out um, isn't just an afternoon's job, I take it. No. Um, <laughs> can go for, oh, well, one research that I did, you know, 18 months you can be away <laughs> from home, you know, and um, that's I mentioned that in the play of Drover's wife that uh, he le he leaves the, the, his wife for 18 months, you know, and he comes home and there's a child. <laughs> That's almost one and so forth. So, yeah, they can go for a very, very long time. Uh, okay. Um, look, it goes back to the child's almost one. If he was a bit younger, he'd be, be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Yes. <laughs> right. Well, well, we'll come back to the, the, the movie in a, a little while. But let's just talk a little about little bit about uh, Wentworth because the last time we chatted when you were here in the UK which I think was three years ago now wow. yeah wow. um you were about to embark on the final there you are there's the three of you on our event great photo <laughs> yeah uh that's down to Paul <laughs> awesome Paul so um when you were in the UK you were, you'd done the, your first series series seven and you were about yeah. to embark on series eight part one or two. It, suffice to say, it's quite a rocky road, wasn't it? Getting the show to completion. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, um, we had COVID come through. My my dates of filming clashed with their dates <laughs> of filming. Um, but, you know, I think we eventually got there and they worked hard on the scripts, but there was that kind of big gap in between. We were one of the first productions to actually go back to work in, in, in COVID times um, for the first and the second. So, but look, you know, we just dug in and uh, continued to do our best and and, and, and and got it done, you know. And it was brilliant. It's a fantastic um, conclusion to, to the series. Yeah, no, thanks. It was... Um, yeah, it was it was it was it was bittersweet, you know, because it was like, okay, if you've got to bring something to an end, you've got to find the closure within you. But then, um, gosh, we all miss each other, you know. And uh, it's in Australia, the show runs on a on a broadcaster called Foxtel. So, <laughs> so when I miss the girls, I just jump on demand and <laughs> and watch the scenes and give them a text and say, oh, you were great in that, and uh, you know. And I had a screening, a gala screening of the Drover's Wife on Thursday evening here in Australia. And um, Cecilia, Tammy and uh, Susie was was oh, there. That they, they arrived. It was lovely to share the moment with them because Cecilia, um, you know, because whilst I was off, off set, you know, back in the green room, I'd be, I'd be working on it. They go, what are you working on, Leah? So the girls were well aware of it. And Tammy had a very small part in it, a little cameo. Um, so it was nice for them to come and 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 you know and and um, celebrate with me on that night. Yeah. Now you mentioned that when you're filming the, the final two part series of uh, Wentworth, there were some clashes in dates. Is that why initially Rita was out in that that uh, house in the in the bush, that beautiful location? Yes. That's ah, exactly I do think there must be a story behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that was exactly why. Um, you know. I had told them prior, but for whatever reasons, the dates clashed, and so they had to uh, put uh, Rita in um, protective custody, and she sat out there for a while, and you know, and then and then and I think it was good that you know um, uh, Luke Kelly's the character came in, and and um, you know that new storyline, so that Rita come. Had to come back and, and fight for something, <laughs> fight yeah. for her girls again, protect her ladies. So, yeah, no, I thought it was um, it was good. It was a it was a beautiful spot to to be working in by the looks of things. Where were you when you were doing that? Oh, look, we were somewhere. We were Melbourne has 
I'm not, because I'm not from Melbourne, I know that it was on the outskirts and it was near, maybe someone could Google it for us, it was near a zoo that they have. So in the distance was giraffes. Like we were sitting, like I didn't realise that we were going out and it's like a safari zoo, so it's quite open. And we're and they're, they're setting up the shot where I'm sitting at the table and my lawyer comes. And I look out and I went, is that giraffes in the distance? And they went, yes, it is. And all of a sudden I looked across and I went, is that a rhinoceros? You know, like. <laughs> It was, and they went, oh, because I. And then they realised, oh, sorry, Lee, you're not from Melbourne. Yeah, this is like where the safari zoo is, and I think there was also a rescue animal rescue place not further. So it was beautiful. It was out in the middle of, well, well, the outskirts of um, Melbourne, and there was a beautiful river. It was amazing. Okay. You know, it was lovely. Yeah. I, I'm getting flashbacks here to a holiday my partner and I went on years ago to Bulgaria. And we, we were driving around different places every couple of nights. I walked down to the, the bottom of this very long garden at uh, this place we were staying and came mm. back and went, there were giraffes at the bottom of the garden. We were the same. We backed onto the zoo. And the, I was like, there were giraffes at the bottom of the garden. How funny is this? This is worth yeah. the, the price of the room alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was a beautiful old cottage. And I can't remember if it was actually, I think it had something to do with the with the zoo and it was heritage listed. And I said, oh, what an awesome bed and breakfast if this was part of your world or wake up or at the night to hear the roar of something would be a bit scary but um no it was yeah but it was a beautiful um location yeah so um rita connors was essentially the greatest top dog we never got um, oh, when, when, when you took on the role did you assume that rita was at some point you know, you know take control of the steam press no because that wasn't rita's that's not Rita, who Rita is. She didn't have any intention of wanting to make life in prison. She was always about clearing her name. And, um, look, if if she had to, you know, to really protect the women and to step up, I think she wouldn't say no, but it, it would, they'd really have to twist her arm because it just wasn't in her character. She didn't, she didn't want, she wasn't, she wasn't there for a long term, even though mm -hmm. she's, you know, was up on murder charges. In my world and Radawar's world, we, we, we get cleared. <laughs> <laughs> and we get out and uh, we live happily ever after, riding off into the sunset on our bikes. Uh, you think that's, that's how they got concluded in the end? <laughs> well, that, yeah. that's our version anyway. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, the driver's wife, that's the, the big news for you at the moment, a massive project. Mm -hmm. um, You've been involved in so many different aspects: like writer, director, lead actor, and producer. Is that right? Yeah, I'm a producer. Yep, yeah. and I did all my fight stunts, of course. How and was it juggling all those roles? I, I I loved it because I've been thirty years in the industry, and it was I was at a point where I wanted to be um, challenged. And and to tell you the truth, just before Wentworth, I sort of made an announcement with my agent. And my partner, who's my manager, I said I, I might semi-retire from acting, and uh, then I and of course I get a call out of the blue, and it's Wentworth Producers, and they're saying, "Come and play, and you'll be the next lead and holding the story and help us collaborate." And you go, "Oh, okay." Uh, put the actor hat back on, and you go, "You betcha." So, um, so building on from that, and I had those, I guess. The stimulation of that with the women and 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 being Rita, and I and then I got to work on um, my own feature film idea and, and and writing a lead role for myself. And I and I was at that point I wanted to be challenged. You know, TV directing is different to feature film, so you're a lot more under the um, leadership of the producers when it's TV. So to do your own film and to have such a personal story, because my mum would read this story to me when I was a little girl um, of five years old. So it was a story that was with me for a long time. Mm -hmm. And what I did to it, it's it's one of our famous and classic um, short stories here in Australia, The Drover's Wife. But what I did was reimagined it, put my Indigenous heritage through it. So that's a big twist to the story because it was written by um, a white male prior and the Indigenous stories were all in the background and very stereotypical, so they weren't very, very nice. But um, 
but yeah, so I just I forgot the question. Where did we? Where were? What were we talking about? Where were we I going? Too. Oh, juggling the juggling the roles. Of, juggling. Uh, so I was I was really ready to 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 tackle. You know, the director. And look, I'm a woman. I multitask. Of course, I had to be on the producing side. Just come on, come on, get things rocking and rolling. Um, but I loved it. I do it. I do it all again tomorrow in a heartbeat. Um, I, I believe I, I've done a great job in, in tying it all together. I'm a collaborator. You know, lots of crew and the cast said they loved working with me, so that's a good thing. Um, good. But I was ready to do this. You know, it, it, but by jingos, it's hard. And someone sent me a. Um, a photo just recently it was the last day and i'm sitting in in the trailer uh, you know sort of just about i got one shoe off i'm supposed to undress and just a look on my face but i give this little tiny thumbs up and it brought it just brought back all these memories and i went yeah that was tough to do but i loved it because i was really challenged and it made me work hard to you know, work towards perfection with my acting and directing and communicating with other actors on such a big scale. We shot it in four weeks, uh, sorry, five weeks and four days. So that's pretty fast too. But that's Australian movie industry. You know, there's you, you, there's not a lot of money, so you just got to go, go, go. <laughs> and how, how do you go about directing yourself? I think? Yeah, look, I've done it before in theatre. And so I, so I did that deliberately to get some runs on the board. Um, but because it started out as a play, um, the, the the drover's wife, um, I had that experience under under my belt, so to speak. So I sort of knew where Molly Johnson sat within me as a performer. And then all I had to do really was, you know, look over lines and, if anything, pull back the performance because in theatre it's it's larger. So, and because I was so busy with everything else, I didn't have time to think about it. And I reckon it's some of my best acting, you know. Um, it's 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 reader matured, you know. So, because um, it still had that, it had that earthiness and, um, you know, the the guts of of, of Rita. Um, so so yeah, I, I I just loved I loved I loved doing all of it. It was tiring. It was hard work, but I, I loved that challenge. Okay. Well, you just mentioned that. Um... Originally, it started a play, so it's gone quite a journey, hasn't it? In several different forms. Um, but I love the fact you said it's been with you since you were five years old. Um, it's sort of always been part yeah. of you. Is it? Is it a true story? Yeah, my, is it based on? Uh, a true no, story? it's no, no. So what? Well, yes and no. Um, Henry Lawson was a poet, and he was called the poor man's poet. And then we had Banjo Patterson, who was the upper class poet. He wrote the Man from Snowy River. But Henry Lawson was the people's poet, and my mum had his. This is this is the book of the fifteen stories, and um, this was the book that my mum had. And the reason I knew that I was so what Henry would do was get out on the road and walk, bum a lift, you know, saddle a horse maybe because this was published in eighteen ninety two, and uh, he would go out and spend time on properties. And, well, that's what he was saying he was doing. Uh, he could have been sitting in a room in Sydney with his whiskey fantasising it all, you know. But that's what he said, that he would go out to come, uh, to properties, out to the bush, into the city and sit and observe and write poetry and short stories. Um, but um, what I've done is based it in facts of my family. So my family's DNA, so our, our, our stories are woven in. And that's what I'm doing at the moment is basing... Anything I've been writing at the moment has been based on fact and then it allows me to build up and sort of add a bit of fiction, And but it just makes it very truthful to me. Um, but I remember my mum reading it to me at five because on the blank pages I wrote Dora, whoops, hang on, Dick, Dora, Nip and Fluff, and that was my grade one readers, characters out of our readers. So I knew that I was exactly five years old. <laughs> and, and I, and I think the story stuck with me for a very long time was because um, uh, I was five and I it was the first story where I used my imagination and I put myself in that story. You know, my mother was a drover in her, when she was a teenager, she would drove with her, with yeah. her father. Yeah, and we also wondered where 
that love for horses came from. And she came from a family of seven girls and they could all ride horses. And then we found this photo, which is my great grandmother. So this is my grandfather's mother and she's 15 and she's a drover there. So the love of horses came from this lady. So it, to me, it was just this gift waiting for me to be ready to write this, you know, it's, 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 as I said, it started out as a play. Then I wrote the novel. So, you know, when you saw me in season seven, when I was in the slot, when the, when the, um, um, not ambush. Oh uh, yeah. When Susie, um, Mari was trying to escape. The, the siege. Yeah. The siege. That's the word. And I was in the slot. I was finishing yeah. off the book. I was finishing off the book. So I had my computer and when the camera wasn't on me, I'd be typing away and then the AD would knock on the window and I'd shove it under the mattress and fly up to the window and <laughs> act my little dance up. Oh, yes, it was hilarious. So whenever I got a moment, I was working on that. And then, of course, out of that also um, I was working on the, on the screenplay. So it was a story that meant something and I think it's done so well because it is coming from a, pay, a place of truth and it is a classic in Australia. Australia and it you know audiences from 16 year olds to 80 year olds know yeah. that story because it's been taught in school so hopefully yeah. those audience go and see see the film when it's out can yeah. I just yeah. acknowledge all the people that are leaving messages I'm so not tech savvy and uh if I had a brain that could read and talk at the same time so thanks everyone <laughs> for the nice things you're saying no oh, uh, yeah we're, we're talking about um, the, the audience watching at the moment who have obviously you know, come, come to watch today because of, because of Wentworth. Um, why should the Wentworth fan base come and see The Drover's Wife? Why should you? Because you love Rita. And this is Rita's yeah. great, 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 great auntie. <laughs> no, look, it is. Look, it's, 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 it's a Western genre um and i and i chose that because they could wield guns and point guns and talk quite harshly to one another but this is a woman's story this is an indigenous woman at the helm it hasn't been done before a, a lead role of of, of an, a woman of color in a lead role holding a story and it's a great story it's it, it's a shared dreaming dreaming is something that we're doing right now we're sharing this moment we're creating a journey and what i did with my film and it's for um uh, you know, Australian audience in our history, but Britain is also a part of our history. You know, when the fleet came here in 1788, welcome to our, you know, you brought yourself into our, our our world. So it's a shared dreaming of sharing this story. And I guess it's a bit of history of what happened around that time. But it is about a woman's, it's about a mother's love. It's about survival and it's about hope. And it's, and, and it's a ripper. It's, it is a ripper. There's a bit of biffo in there that everyone gets a bit. So you'll see a bit of reader come back. I've got a spot on me. I don't know if you can see that. But <laughs> action and it's beautiful. You know, it's 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 a beautiful story. And um, lots of people have said it's like poetry. The dialogue is different. There's a cadence to it. Visually, you see Australia. You know, we see the plain country. Not many people know that we have snow here in the high country and we we got a bit of ice which was a throw in because the snow season was over but there's still some in the up in the mountains of the high you know the high country so it's 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 not like the normal Australian films you get where it's the hot heat of the desert and, and the brutality of the land. The land actually comes across as another character and you see the femininity in it and how comfortable Molly is in this land. And then something reveals itself. She learns something and she understands why she fits into this, uh, into this uh, space and place. So, and the music unreal it's off the dial that's the contemporary so even though it's an old story from um a very old story from henry lawson and i've kept it in that 1800s vibe but the music's all quite contemporary folk contemporary we've got you know twang and lead guitars at in when the when there's things going on and when it's going off so a lot of people have commented on that too a nice way to weave the past but have a contemporary element i guess because we want young people to come and you know feel a part of the journey as well well i think your your passion and obviously love for the sort of material is shining um out of you at the moment i think that's enough to just sell a movie to people watching um as it is oh, thank how, you. how has the process been of taking a play script into prose and then into a film script oh i, I 
I've, I love that challenge. And once again, I challenged myself so that when people saw the play, in the play there's only two acts uh, and it stops. And I always leave my work open-ended because it brings about discussion. And you want people to talk about your work, not where they're going for coffee, when it's all neatly tied up. So in the play, an incident happens and Molly says to her son, when you're old enough, I'm going to introduce you to so-and-so and so-and-so who did wrong by her. And then all of a sudden they're off on a journey and the lights go to black in the theatre and everyone went, what's going on? Is this over? And and I went, yes, I got you. Because people will go, what happened next? So then when it came to writing the novel, I wanted what that allowed me to do was I could be more internal. So you got Molly Johnson's internal thoughts and her spiritual beliefs. So there's incidents that happen, but, of course, anyone that deals with trauma, they take their mind, use their mind to get out of that circumstance, and you get that more in the novel. But then when you see the film, it's a little idiot. Well, it's a film. You've, you know, it's quite, it's a bit more realistic and it's there in your face, although I have done it. Um, I think tastefully, you know, it's not, there's not brutality in there just for the sake of it. It it, it earns its place, but I'm also very aware um, of how to treat my audience because my 25 years in theatre, you know, I know when to take them to the edge. I know when to pull back. Mm-hmm. I know when to give them a rest. And hello to Tasmania. Someone from Tassie is watching. <laughs> We've got people all over the world. We watch it, That's amazing. Um, did, um, have, May of the cast from the stage production transferred to the, the screen. Yes, um, two two of the um, men did. Uh, so that was um, the two stockmen, and um, uh, Tony Cogan and Benedict Hardy. Um, they were they, and they were great to have there because they knew the story as well. So it was one less conversation that I had to have when I was explaining stuff. So they actually helped me explain stuff and would pick up the story and this means that. And what was also beautiful is we had new blood with there's there's two um, uh, characters that come from London uh, out to be the the new police control of this uh, town that's about to develop. And um, Sam Reed and Jessica DeGal play those two characters and they were it, that, that were just amazing. And um, when, when you hear great actors like that take your words that you wrote, it was like, oh, wow, a, you know, a little kid in a candy shop. I went, wow, they're my words and they've just taken it to another level. So uh, and then, of course, having the novel, I could, here's your chapter I'll see you set and they loved it because they went oh wow look at all these pages about the back the backstory to my character so everything sort of helped one another and, and brought a different perspective on, on it which is which is what I challenged myself to do and I, I think I've done it right do you think this is the end of the journey for the drover's wife or or are you going to another adaption is there another adaption that can happen there's another adaption so in the in the play the future uh, sorry in the film the future is the children and a lot of people said from the play and the movie what happens to the kids and i went well funny you should say that because i've just finished the outlines of a pitch document and we're pitching it well i've got to hand it in at the end of may and it'll be a limited tv series but it starts in 2020 oh, nice. so there's a little girl in the in the film when when you all go and see the film on the 13th of may in the uk um there's a little girl in the film and it's her great 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 granddaughter in 2020 and an incident happens and it sends her back and she's got to go back through the past and she gets her family's history. But all the stories about the kids are all new. So it's all the stuff that didn't make the film or I didn't quite get in the book. So I've just had a ball making up all these other stories. So I get pumped oh, wow. when I think about it. Yeah, so I'm excited. Absolutely. And I've got to tell you this one, John. And yeah. the last thing, someone has asked us to do an opera. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and I said, I'd, you know, I, just, I said I'd love to direct that. I said, but I want, you know, the big opera, you know, the big scale. So that would be I bet cool. You didn't see that one coming, did you? No, no. We <laughs> joked about it, and then all of a sudden, one, uh, uh, the agent rung, and we thought, oh, you, you having a having a lend, and she went, no, I'm not. <laughs> so well, that's cool. 
the possibilities are endless. You've got the, you know, the, the drover's wife, the musical, on ice. That's it, on ice. And, and then someone said, what about the game? And I said, absolutely, we've got to get the molly. You know, I'm up for that. I've got some ideas. Point Interactive 3D virtual reality. Oh, it's just endless. Endless, yeah. The, the gift that keeps on giving. So, yes. so we, we, you open it on the 13th of May yeah. in the UK. Uh, where can people go and, go and see it? Is it um, independent theatres? Yeah, I've cinemas? got a few things here. Um, Picture House Cinemas. Um, let me just have a look. Other film sites are in the UK. Edinburgh Film House, to home, Manchester, Bristol Watershed. Does that all make sense? The full list can be found at modernfilms.com forward slash Drover's Wife, all one Brilliant. word. So people can um, go there to get the times and, and, and where exactly. I'm just trying to think. Yeah, modernfilms.com forward slash Drover's wife to find out where it's playing in the UK. But I think it'll be a, a, a wide broadcast. And if you follow uh, Modern Films, I'm doing, um, as of tomorrow, a fair few um, interviews and, and Q&As as well as at some of the screenings, the advanced yeah. screenings. So get on and look that up because I'm going to do Q&As for those. Brilliant. And, of course, in this modern age, we all walk around with a, a mobile computer in the palm of our hands. Um, it's easy to research and, and Google the title to find out where screenings will be around the UK. And I'm yeah. sure Screen Star will in, include uh, links as well um, so people can find where to go and see you. That's fantastic. Um, yeah. Before I let you go, I just want to have a little word about all the awards and nominations, whether it was the play, the novel, and now the film. Um, mm. You've received all sorts of accolades, haven't you? Ah, oh, it's, it's crazy. Like, I've won... Even in just this year alone, I've won some big awards, Asian Pacific Awards for Jury Prize, just won the best film at the Gold Coast Film Festival. I won the Chevelle Award. And it's like, what's going on? And this thing hasn't even opened yet in Australia. And, you know, and prior to that, the film, uh, the sorry, the play cleaned up at at our um, actors, which is like your, um, not, not sorry, at the, uh, which, no, the Helpman Award, so the equivalent to your, Theatre awards uh, just cleaned up in that, so it's been it's been a, an amazing gift and and I guess um, an opportunity for me to show my talents, I guess, and my dedication to the craft. And so, yeah, look, I'm, there's a few pinch me moments in there, and of course, the star on the Walk of Fame at the Randwick Ritz. I was, and that was I was very, about to ask about that. That was just a few days ago, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, that was Thursday night. So it was part of the gala. So I went there and got my star and then walked the red carpet and in we went and saw a, a great screening of the show. Um, um, so, yeah, no, it's – it's so whatever I've done, I've, 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 I've done something right, I think. <laughs> There's Absolutely. been well, beautiful yeah. acknowledgements, you know. Speaking of acknowledgements, the, the last thing I mentioned, of course, is that you've been awarded uh, a member of the Order of Australia. Yes, I have. And I received that in May, finally, because of COVID and a few other things, the ceremony has been pushed off. And, you know, and it was for the arts and my community work with Indigenous children and women in general, how I reach and, and bring um, issues to the forefront through my art. And, you know, it's about empowering women to make safe choices for themselves and to know that they're not alone in, you know, in particular domestic violence comes through strong in the drover's wife. That's one issue. So, um, yeah, my work in the community was acknowledged for the um, Australian um, uh, recognition of the from the country, and that's that's pretty cool. <laughs> so now you've received the, that honour. Um, when we next see you in the UK, does that mean we all have to curtsy? Oh, wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. <laughs> I think you should. Oh, we will, yeah. We'll get practicing, definitely. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Rita will go, what are you doing? Get up. No, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank, uh, you, and thank you very much for giving your time on what I know is an incredibly busy period for you. Interview after interview after interview. Yeah, no, it's all good. But thanks, everyone. And, um, you know, and I just want to say to all the fans from Wentworth, thank you very much for your love and support because... You know, without that, we wouldn't have, might not have come back from, you know, season seven. Um, so, you know, we do miss you guys as as us um, when the girls, when we talk, you know, we talk about, 
how awesome the fans were and supportive. So, you know, from our bottom of our hearts, thank you very much. And, um, you know, who knows what the future might bring. <laughs> well, thank you for all your love and, and enthusiasm um, that you've brought to the screen today. It's been brilliant and quite infectious, quite frankly. <laughs> oh, thank you. But thanks, everybody. Take care and we'll see you in the UK soon, I hope. I hope so. Yeah, it'll be awesome to come back. Thank you. Right. Um, before you all switch off, because it's just me here now, um, we've got a little bit of extra news that we have a giveaway. We have a prize giveaway. We have 10 copies of the Wentworth on file book and signed photos from Lear to give away. And the way that you get this, so brace yourselves, get ready, is the first 10 people who email Screen Star at the email address below, info at screenstar.tv, will receive a copy of Wentworth on file and signed photo from Leah. So hit your keyboards and send in an email now. And we'll see you at the, uh, the next show. See you at the next Wentworth Unlock.